Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. At 9.45 p.m. on May 7, 2025, the Laboratory of the Institute of Optics and Electronics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences was brightly lit. Engineer Li Gong stared at the data on the screen, his fingers trembling slightly, the domestically produced 172 nanometers ultraviolet lithography machine in front of him had just engraved a 9.8 nanometers line width circuit on a 7 nanometers process wafer. This set of data means that China has broken through the 10 nanometers blockade for the first time using non-EUV technology. The secret of this machine is hidden in its light source. The ultraviolet light, with a wavelength of 172 nanometers, has a photon energy of up to 7.2 eV, which is equivalent to five times that of traditional eye-line light sources. This energy can directly break the chemical bonds of organic matter, just like cutting butter with a laser pen. In the wafer cleaning process, it can excite oxygen molecules in the air to produce free radicals decomposing 0.5 nanometer pollutants into carbon dioxide and water vapor. The actual measurement of SMIC's production line shows that after using this technology, the yield of 7 nanometers chips has soared from 82% to 89%, saving more than 230 million yuan in chemical cleaning agent costs each year. What shocked the industry even more was the cost. ASML's EUV lithography machine costs $150 million per unit and must be paired with special photoresist and a vacuum environment. However, this domestically produced equipment is priced at only 32 million renminbi and can be operated in an ordinary workshop. During the workshop test at Shenzhen Souk Company last month, workers even operated the equipment while eating lunch boxes. The falling rice grains were automatically decomposed by the light source, and the system operation was not affected at all. A TSMC engineer who visited exclaimed, This is simply the Wuling Hongguang in the lithography industry cheap, durable, and comes with its own cleaner. 2. From chips to cells, a cross-dimensional technological explosion. In the dust-free workshop of Wuhan Taizue Company, Dr. Wang, the technical director, is showing their killer weapon, T150A photoresist. This glue, which is optimized for the 172 nanometers band, has only 0.3 nanometers of residue after exposure, and all the raw materials are domestically produced. In the past, we used the glue from Japan's Shinetsu, but they would stop supplying and raise the price at any time. Dr. Wang said while tapping the wafer, now our glue not only has better performance, but is also 40% cheaper. The cross-border application of this technology is even more dazzling. In the 3D printing workshop of Shenzhen Souk, a 172 nanometers light source is curing a 500 micrometers thick photosensitive resin layer. 20 minutes later, a microfluidic chip for early screening of liver cancer was formed and the accuracy of the internal capillary network reached 1 micron. The German company offered 30 million to buy this technology, but we didn't sell it. Factory director Zhang pointed to the equipment being assembled, this machine will be sent to Peking Union Medical College Hospital soon, and they will do single-cell manipulation experiments. In the laboratory of Harbin Institute of Technology thousands of miles away, Doctoral student Xiao Liu is debugging the LDP optical system. The calcium fluoride reflector they developed has a light energy loss rate 12% lower than similar products of ASML, but the cost is only one-third. The United States bans calcium fluoride crystals. We burn them ourselves. Xiao Liu held up a crystal lens, using fluorite, or from Inner Mongolia, the purity is 99.999%, which will piss off those who impose sanctions. 3. Speed of life and death. Can China's semiconductor industry overtake others? Although the technological breakthrough is exciting, the crisis is still looming. In the factory of Suzhou Guangming Mingyuan Optical Technology, Chief Engineer Chen is worried about the life of the light source. 
eczema lamps can only last for 2,000 hours now, which is far from the 5,000 hours required for mass production. There are more than 20 kinds of experimental lamps in their workshop, some wrapped in carbon nanotube heat dissipation film, and some soaked in liquid nitrogen. Singhua's SSMB EUV project has given us new ideas. Chen opened the design drawing, using particle accelerators to generate synchrotron radiation, the power density can reach 200 milliwatts per square centimeter, and the lamp life problem may be solved next year. The coordinated operations of the industrial chain are also in full swing. In the assembly workshop of Shanghai Microelectronics, workers are debugging the third generation 172 nanometers lithography machine. The new model is equipped with Huawei's Hongmeng Industrial Control System, which can automatically identify the parameters of domestic photoresists. In the past, it took half a month to adjust each time a new type of glue was changed, but now it can be used as soon as it is plugged in. Operator Xiao Zhao demonstrated the touch interface, Huawei engineers also made a full mode for us, and technical secondary school students can start working after three days of training. The secret battle in the international market has already started. On May 6, South Korea's Samsung suddenly announced the purchase of 10 Chinese 172 nanometers lithography machines for mature process chip production. Industry insiders revealed that Samsung actually wanted to dismantle the research technology path. We have been prepared for this. A researcher from the Chinese Academy of Sciences sneered, the key modules are equipped with self-destruct chips. Whoever dares to dismantle the machine privately will directly melt the optical system. Fourth, the future has come, the fate of the country written on the lithography machine. Looking back in the early summer of 2025, this lithography revolution is very similar to the high-speed rail game of that year. While Western giants are still trapped in the precision cage of EUV, Chinese engineers have opened up a way out with innovation by local methods, replacing vacuum chambers with atmospheric environments, fighting precision monopolies with modular designs, and replacing chemical reagents with free radical cleaning. On the assembly line of an electronics factory in Dongguan, Xiao Li, a newly hired technician born in the 2000s, is operating a 172 nanometers lithography machine. Wearing AR glasses, he follows a virtual instructor to learn how to adjust exposure parameters. My grandfather's generation had to be sneaky when dismantling imported equipment. Xiao Li stroked the Chinese operating interface on the body of the machine, now it's the turn of foreigners to learn from us. On the other side of the ocean, ASML's stock price has plummeted 37% in the past three months. Its CEO Peter Wenink wrote in an internal letter, The Chinese have taught us a truth, the ultimate form of technology is not extreme precision, but extreme adaptation. This sentence was screenshot and circulated by netizens with subtitles, Thank you, Chinese teacher. When 172 nanometers ultraviolet light penetrates the wafer, it not only carves out nanoscale circuits, but also a mark of a country's upward climb. From being forced to use the energy of making atomic bombs to develop photoresist, to now becoming the master in the lithography machine battlefield, this beam of ultraviolet light from China's semiconductor industry not only illuminates the future of chips, but also provides an eastern answer to innovation and survival.